Uh, do you have any sort of um, thoughts about the recent re-imprisonment re of Chelsea Manning uh, due to her, un you know, taking a moral stand that she was not willing to back down from when it comes to the grand jury that is, uh, you know, looking to indict Julian Assange? Well, what, one of my only thoughts is that more people here in the Bay Area uh, are paying attention now because Chelsea's a heroine and, and, and a lot of people here were determined to try to get, get her out. There was a lot of energy behind that. I think I told you that while well, she was still in prison and they made her the honorary grand marshal of the gay pride parade, which is probably the biggest gay pride parade in the country, if not the world. Now, what can, you know, if there's any leverage there, you know, that there was one time I saw this kind of email, uh, snail mail, telephone organization work, obviously. And that was when the Pentagon Special Effects Department was going to blow up a huge bomb called Divine Strike, the conventional bomb, not a nuclear bomb, but it was a much larger conventional bomb than had ever been blown up. And they were going to do it at the Nevada test site, which means they would be stirring up all this radioactive material that would blow on what are called the downwinders in that part of the, uh, the country, in the you know, Colorado, Utah area. Right. And, and they had people write so many letters that they had to fill up an airplane. They filled up an airplane and then a local newscaster who had been reporting on it flew to Washington with this airplane full of letters. Um, you know, and in, in that case, if people felt immediately threatened. And it's much easier to organize something like that when people feel immediately threatened. Well, we know that um, there has been an ongoing um, effort by uh, supporters of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and Chelsea Manning, uh, but specifically in the last year or so uh, by supporters of WikiLeaks to uh, help people and encourage people to write letters to human rights um, organisations and NGOs, as well as their local politicians, especially um, MPs in the UK. Uh, for, for British uh, viewers, listeners and supporters of Assange, that's a huge effort that is ongoing. Um, for sure, that is important that people should participate in if they haven't already. It's definitely one avenue because a lot of viewers, um, you know, in every single vigil will say, what can we do to help? Which is a great question. And that's one of the things people can do is they can write letters to their representatives and make it very clear that this is an issue that they care about deeply. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I had considered trying to get some people together to make an appointment with Barbara Lee who is our representative out here, who has taken a number of courageous stands, like voting against the Patriot Act. Although, although I, it's really hard to believe that we're going to get any help with this from any U.S. Congress people. Yeah. But, you know, we, we could... Particularly the, the Democrats who, who now really hate yeah. Julian Assange. So any, anything associated with Julian Assange, I think, very few Democrats are on board to help out. But it's possible that the LGBT community may be mobilized behind Chelsea. And you can't, you can't be, mobil be mobilized behind Chelsea without being mobilized behind what she did. Right. Um, yeah. Something else that I did this week when I was browsing on the WikiLeaks website, you know how to get on the homepage and you click leaks then you get batches of leaks with icons. And I was just scrolling through them and I came to one about <coughs> corruption with regard to a, a federal law or program, whatever, it, it was supposed to employ disabled people. And it was federal funds to employ disabled people. But there'd been huge corruption with it. There was some company called Source America that was very, very involved that has a very self-righteous website about all these things, things that it does for disabled people. And it turned out that a lot of corporations had been involved as well. Uh, like <laughs> they had used it in a way to hire staff and 
get the federal government to pay for it by hiring people who are just barely disabled. And there are a lot of things you can do, like taking a few psych meds to qualify as barely disabled. So I have a friend who produces a, a show called Pushing Limits, which is a disability, is about pushing beyond your disability. And I sent that to her and said, I suppose you know all about this, right? Uh, she said, no, she never heard about it. And she sent it to her collective, her radio production collective, and they were going to think about whether or not they could produce any programming about it. Um, so I think, and I had similar experience when I went through the diplomatic cables and I, I went through the diplomatic cables for the African Great Lakes region. And I found a number that were really shocking about Rwanda. Rwanda is like a, a, a developing country with a surveillance system that is like that of the United States or the UK. You can't go into a store without setting off all kinds of alarms about what you've got in your pockets. Right. Um, well, that's definitely one of the issues that we've been talking about throughout today's you know, vigil is that um, there are so many different subjects that WikiLeaks um, documents cover and kind of enlighten us on years later when at the time that they were published, you know, WikiLeaks itself and, and the journalists covering the, the releases wouldn't have known that, that, that these particular documents would be relevant. And then years later, we have, you know, people appointed to positions where the WikiLeaks documents kind of can illuminate their history and, you know, all the United States history towards them, all sorts of different ways. Um, and the, the, we've been talking about the, the, the kind of breadth of subjects that WikiLeaks kind of has informed us all on. Um, yeah. And I think that's what you're talking about is a real example of that for sure. No, absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's an extraordinary historical archive. I mean, it's like, you know, researchers uh, for, you know, the coming decades are going to be relying on this. I mean, you know, yeah. it's the, to know about the workings of the U.S. government, and uh, which isn't available uh, in, say, the public records. I mean, this is, this, this is, this is uh, you know, the, the actual cables, that, this is how they communicate among, among themselves. And now we know this. So this is a, a unique... Um, uh, treasure, and you know, we we and we were forever in uh, Julian's debt that he's given this to us. Every time I find something of interest to a particular community that perhaps has not been that aware of or interested in WikiLeaks, because the leaks that have gotten all the press are those that implicate the Pentagon in war crimes and crimes against humanity. Uh, or genocide, depending on how you define it. Uh, and you know, I don't know of anyone else who took the time to read them about the Great Lakes region of Africa. A actually, I do. I do know one woman who wrote a book about Uganda and said she used what was there, what was available. And someone, a lawyer who was, who was involved in defending the president of the I Ivory Coast, who was swept off to the ICC? Well, Laurent Bagbo. Yeah, Laurent Bagbo yeah. yeah. has been acquitted. He was acquitted. Was, yeah. acquitted. He was acquitted, but he's sort of still imprisoned yeah. at the ICC. <laughs> well, that's what happens with these international courts. I mean, you're acquitted, and then the prosecutors <laughs> have the right to appeal the acquittal, and so you stay you stay in prison while the prosecutors <laughs> appeal the, the your acquittal. It's uh, it's quite extraordinary. Well, there are a bunch of. Uh, people who have been men who, who have been acquitted by the International Criminal Tribunal in Rwanda and and in the appeals process, and they're sort of stuck. They're stuck. And yeah, they're stuck there because the the propaganda and the propaganda all around the ICTR convinced the world that they were all monsters. So even though they've been acquitted, nobody wants them. Oh yeah, right, right. But yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I, I plan to keep reading, reading through the leaks, looking for uh, leaks that might expand the community that haven't been talked about so much, like these about the corruption in Source One and the use of the intended use of federal funds to employ disabled people. But again, you know, uh, today um, the U.S. Um, 
denied visas to um, um, staff of the International Criminal Court. And so because, you know, the International Criminal Court, they might be investigating uh, Americans uh, for possible prosecution. So, so basically, no visas, you can't come into the United States. And then the State Department issues the statement saying, well, we like um, hybrid courts. We, we don't like the International Criminal Court, but we like, we, we've always supported these hybrid courts. Uh, so like the Rwanda Tribunal, Yugoslavia Tribunal. Yes, we support the courts that we control, finance, staff, make sure who the judges are, who the prosecutors are. We give them the remit. You are to investigate just yeah, what yeah. went on from this month of this year to that month of this year. Yeah, and exactly. yeah, we like those courts. Those, those are the courts we will support. We won't support any court in which um, any American might uh, be uh, arrested for or, you know, even heaven forbid convicted for. Those, those we're not going to support. Well, there are documents. I think they're available on the ICC website. There are agreements between the U.S. and most every African country yes. that they will not indict, they will not extradite yeah, one another. Article 98 agreements, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And we also, and I mean, returning to uh, just just the overall publications that WikiLeaks has released, um, you know, we know, and I, this is, again, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but I think it's worth repeating that there have been, I believe, when you look at um, Google Scholar, um, WikiLeaks comes up in, in what is now over, I believe, 48,000 um, you know, what, uh, documents, whether that is um, court cases, scholarly papers, um, and that type of thing. And it really, to me, begs the question, why are there not courses being offered in universities, um, either based on WikiLeaks's material in certain subjects or just based on WikiLeaks as, as a, you know, model overall? I, I don't know if either of you have thoughts on that, but to me, it seems well, like you, something that you, should you, be happening. What you've just said is an excellent idea. I mean, I, th I think I'll go and um, offer that as a course somewhere because that's, an, <laughs> that's a brilliant suggestion. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what, um, you know, you could say, you know, WikiLeaks and tribunals. I mean, there's a huge amount there or, you know, anything, or, you know, w w you know WikiLeaks and Rwanda. I mean, there's, you know, any, any number of um, uh, fields that um, uh, one can open up. So that, that's, a, that's a brilliant suggestion. Yeah, I've thought, I mean, as I keep writing about individual WikiLeaks in the African Great Lakes region, it occurred to me that I could put these, I could put these, these reports into a book. I don't, that would be WikiLeaks diplomatic cables from the Great Lakes region of Africa, uh, which is the most, right. the most conflict tortured part of the, of the continent. Um, I don't know if that would be a valuable thing to do, but it did occur to me that that could be done. Could yeah, no, it's, it's like the kind of thing the National Security Archive does. They, they publish um, certain documents that they've got via FOIA, um, you know, on a regular basis. And, you know, often, you know, maybe 20 documents. I mean, but WikiLeaks has actually provides, you know, hell, you know, a hell of a lot more than that. So uh, you can easily, you know, publish books uh, or, you know, just, you know, even sort of, lengthy essays based entirely on uh, WikiLeaks material. They've got, the National Security Archive is in the habit of releasing things when it's too late to cause a fuss. Yes. Um, once, <laughs> you know, just a few years ago, I know. during the Christmas holidays, they released documents acknowledging that they had assassinated Patrice Lumumba. Which everyone had known about for fifty years. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I kind of agree. I mean, and they did they did that what a couple of years ago about how um, George Bush kind of lied to the Russians about um, no NATO expansion to the east, which again, you know, this hardly a great secret. But you know, they they did you know they had a few documents um, to confirm what pretty much every, everybody had already known that. Go, you know, Gorbachev would lie to um, uh, by uh, first by um, uh, George Bush, and then Yeltsin was lied to by Clinton. So, but you know, I mean, it's it's still a useful record, but sure, it, it is a little late. Yeah, no, I think the, the infinitude of subjects that WikiLeaks documents cover means, you know, whether it's on, you know, books about the diplomatic cables in one country or, you know, the Vault 7 release or whether it's about the, the DNC emails and what that revealed about the Democratic primary in 2016, you know, any one of these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds yes, of topics absolutely. could be 
taught or written about in books and it should be um you know because otherwise what the whistleblowers like chelsea manning have done um aren't it isn't made of use unless people really consume that knowledge and put it to work somehow so i wanted to say something about the curation um i think i remember that julian assange said that if he didn't write these introductions to people about what they might be looking for it's hard for us to approach them. And yeah, I found that to be true. And it was only in a talk that he gave about the diplomatic, diplomatic cables when he said, well, people are going to see gaps. They're going to see gaps because we didn't have the top secret cables. So that was why the first time I looked into them before I heard him say that, I, I thought, well, what? What's the significance of this? These are all around the edges of the real catastrophes. Like when the, the, the two, pre, two African presidents, the Burundian and Rwandan president were shot out of the sky over Rwanda or during the first Congo war, especially the outset of the first Congo war. Um, so since those are absent and there had to be a flurry of diplomatic cables coming, uh, you, you know that those must have been very, very top secret. Um, they sort of those cables embroider around the edges of the big conflicts. But I would not have known uh, to look for that if I hadn't seen Julian Assange say that uh, they didn't have the top secret cables, and so we should be looking for gaps like that. Yeah. No. I mean, the one, the one kind of difficulty or. I guess, barrier to entry into looking at WikiLeaks and something that could be addressed would be, uh, you know, I mean, the the value of WikiLeaks is that it does not give you a narrative with which to interpret the documents that they publish. But that can also mean that people who don't have the time to actually um, consider what the primary source material is telling them, um, you know, may find that lack of context um, difficult, for sure. But I think that um, the fact that they don't kind of just create a narrative and spoon feed it to people is one of their greatest strengths, um, you know, as, as a scientist. They, they have a pretty good search engine. So yeah. if you use the search yeah. engine, I mean, you're going to get an awful lot of uh, great documents. So, uh, look, I mean, you've got, I mean, hundreds of thousands of documents. I mean, it's just, it's, it's beyond the capability of anyone to sort of construct, yeah. you know, yeah. a narrative yeah. in, involving all of them. So you're kind of left to your own devices. But, I mean, it's a, it is very well curated. I mean, as I say, I mean, that, that search engine is, is, is very useful. I was just going to say, it took me a little time to figure out how to use it efficiently, but yeah, it's very good.